Hey, what's up everyone? I know it's been a while since I posted a video on here. I've been really busy just doing video projects on my other channel that I'm finishing up here as well as other work outside of YouTube. So that's why I haven't really been posting too frequently on here. But I wanted to post this video today because obviously this is a topic that I didn't really cover when the news initially broke about it because I wanted to find out a little bit more or at least just wait a little bit and see how people's responses were still going to be after the fact so of course this is a subject that's been pretty polarizing between older and new fans and that it's the remake of the shira cartoon that is coming out on netflix now i just want to start off by saying i'm going to preface everything here by saying that yes i do remember the old school shira cartoon i remember watching a couple episodes of it of course i wasn't really into it it was something my sister was more into but i did admittedly watch some episodes of it back in the day you know i remember the toy line my sister had figures you know i had he-man figures so it's something that i do recall and remember very much and it was a decent show from what i can remember but i can't really say that i was ever a hardcore fan of it of course i was more into he-man gi joe thundercat and things like that so that was more my preference but so i'm not on this whole kick of a lot of people that are that were really upset with how this series was this newer series was coming out i, I didn't really care either way honestly i'm not invested in shira like that of course it's something from my past and i also understand from the point of view of older fans like myself that have that nostalgia factor with the series but i'll get into the whole nostalgia thing in just a moment what i want to talk today about is this article from bounding into comics which i think is a very good article and i will go ahead and link it in the description below so you guys can check it out and read it for yourself but it's basically the original shira voice actress uh talks a little bit about more or less defending you know the older fans and kind of she brings up a very good point in the article. I'll just go ahead and read the article. But like I said, if you guys want to read it for yourself, link is in the description below. But let me just go ahead and read the article over here real quick. Former She-Ra voice actress Melindy Britt, who gave voice to She-Ra, Princess Adora, and Catra between 1985 and 1987, took to Facebook to defend fans of the classic series. Britt wrote a lengthy defense of old school fans after an article on Movie Viral called out a number of websites like Nerdist that are decrying fan criticism of the show. I know I may be taking a chance in posting and commenting on this, but my heart has been hurting about the comments some marketing people and publicity machines are bombarding the internet with regarding some fans of the original She-Ra series. I'm actually glad that in this published article, someone has finally said enough to the kind of divisive marketing and negative publicity that has been promoted regarding the fact that some people might actually prefer the original series. It's a big world, and there's enough room for many cartoons, but because the she name is being used to do a new series, I believe you must respect the admiration of fans of the original, and not because you have the power of marketing or an ego trip put them into categories that denigrate their character and insinuate that if they prefer the original, something is wrong with them. In meeting thousands of fans, I've never come across any person who did not have a great heart and genuine love for the integrity and pure intention of the original series. It changed their lives for the better. It gave them comfort, laughter, and joy with a moral view that is exceptional 33 years later. I love each and every one of you. Okay, she is absolutely spot on with what she's saying here. And the truth of the matter is this. Look, we all have opinions. There's people that have preferences. Some people... Even if this newer series ends up being a very well-written series, there's some people that are just always going to prefer the old series. It's the same thing with movie remakes. Some people prefer the original to the newer one and vice versa. There's some people that, that prefer the newer version of a movie as opposed to the original. It happens. That's the beautiful thing about having an opinion is that it's your own. And it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. What's right for you might be wrong to someone else and vice versa. And that's okay. You could just agree to disagree. But to those that would say, look, if you don't like this show after watching the trailer, there's something wrong with you. That's just silly because that same logic could be applied to you for not liking something else. I think it's really dumb for people to say, oh, well, the older fans, you know, they need to get over themselves. They need to stop being man babies. They need to stop being uh, immature about this. Look, the truth be told, without those older fans and their love for these things, the idea of a remake wouldn't have even been possible. The fact that it was something that has been endearing and loved by many for over 30 years now at this point is the whole reason that it's even getting a remake. So to a degree, older fans really deserve more credit than what they get because they're the ones that make these shows. They make them legendary. They make them something that 
can be revisited. Think about the things that we got in the 80s. Think about G.I. Joe. Think about Thundercats. Think about Transformers. These are all things that have gotten modern remakes at some point in time because they made such an impact to those people that grew up watching them. They became such a big hit and a part of pop culture because of the fan frenziness and because of people supporting them, getting behind them, that they still exist today. I mean, look, there might be legitimate reasons why people don't like this newer series once they see it. And the whole thing is with the trailer, you can't judge something completely by the trailer. The trailer, I've heard a lot of people say positive things about it. But here's the thing. How many times have we seen movie trailers where the movie looks to be really, really good, but then you go watch it and it's terrible? And sometimes the reverse is also true. Sometimes the trailer will not do a movie justice. Sometimes the trailer doesn't really convey how good something really is either. So it works both ways. People might just prefer the old school share because it elicits some kind of emotional response from them, or in this case, it elicits nostalgia from them. If people decide to write off this new series completely just because they don't like the animation style, that's their right, and people need to get over that. It doesn't matter. Uh, me personally, I'll, I will give you an example here. The old Voltron series is something that I prefer. I will always prefer it. Why? Because of the emotions that it elicits in me. You know what I mean? I just like the older series. I just do. I know that it's bad. I know that it's not very well written. You know, it's a very cheesy series and it has not aged well, but it's something I prefer because of what it elicits in me. It takes me back to a place, again, like I mentioned earlier, where it was a simpler time. You know, it brings a, a feeling of joy out in me. It brings a feeling of uh, enjoying something with someone else, in this case being my older brother. It was, it was a bonding experience for me and one of my siblings. So it brings out a lot of positive emotions in that regard. So for that, I will always prefer it. So the same thing might apply to these older fans. And to that, I would say that's something to be commended and respected. And if not, if, if you have a difference of opinion, again, that is totally fine. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. And I have heard the concerns that people have that this show could be nothing more than a vehicle for political and social propaganda. And to that, I would say, I hope that that is not the case because I think you got to let kids be kids. Um, I think you could still have a positive female role model and a, a character that empowers females in a show without it uh, being uh, at the forced expense of anyone else, you know what I mean? Or any other group, I should say. Um, I think if you do something naturally and fluid, I, I think that'll show in itself as long as you're not force feeding people with any kind of propaganda or ideology and just tell a good story with a strong character. I think people would just naturally gravitate towards that because people like that. Now, the thing that was a bit more concerning to me is later on in this article that talks about a very prominent YouTuber by the name of Clownfish TV who did a live reaction to the Shira trailer. Now, he didn't have the most favorable things to say about it in that trailer reaction and uh, not surprising, DreamWorks had the video taken down due to copyright infringement not long after that. Now people can say, well, maybe it's because of footage he used, maybe it's because he violated fair use. Uh, no, you see, because there are other videos that did the exact same thing that he did that gave a more favorable view of the show and those have not been taken down. So this is absolutely censorship in its purest form. They didn't like what he had to say. They didn't like the fact that he had several people watching the live stream and they shut it down. They completely shut down his opinion on it um, and his co-host's opinion on it. Now this is, this is not right, okay? Because here's the thing, when you put out things, when you create something, you have to be ready for the good and the bad. That's part of what content creation is all about when you make things. You have to be ready for all this. As a company, they already know better. They know that this is going to happen. And silencing people's opinions, whether good, bad, constructive or not, is really counterproductive That because that completely shuts down any kind of dialogue that you can have with them. There's no way for you to have a discussion with this person now because you'd rather just silence them instead of asking them, hey, what didn't you like about it or contacting them. This is how things improve, is by having differences of opinion. This is There's been times where, as a content creator, I've gotten negative criticism on something that is not even constructive, but it still is something that I use as a positive because it motivates me to do 
better. And you would expect that a company should already know this. This is what to expect when you put something out there. But now I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Like or dislike the video. That's totally fine. Either way, let's have a discussion. We could agree to disagree. I know I won't be losing any sleep tonight. Neither should you. So that's all I'm saying. My name is John and that's just my take.